Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Nestor here. I'm going to walk through your three weeks of packets with you. Um, so for the reading and the math, there's a five a day sheet that looks like this. And you're going to do five each day. So day one, you're going to go from left to right. Day two, left to right. Day three, left to right, just like how you read a book. Day four, left to right. And day five, left to right. So this is the five a day reading language arts and this is for april 13th through the 17th so i'm going to walk you through this for the first part of each day you're going to trace the sight word so this first sight word b y what is that one bye so you're going to try to use your best handwriting to tr actually trace it b y okay and you're going to do it three times the next row, you're going to color the pictures that begin with each blend. And remember, a blend is when two letters join together to make a different sound than they make when they're by themselves. So the first blend is a PL. And remember what a PL says? Pull, pull. Okay, so you're gonna, there's two pictures in this box that start with the, le, the, the blend pull. We have a plane, clock, fly, plant. So you're gonna circle the two that start with a pull. Okay, in the third box, you're writing the vowel sound that you hear in each picture. And remember, a vowel is A, E, I, O U. Okay? So this is a picture of a cap. Cap. And it is done for you. You can hear k app. You can hear the A. So trace the A. Okay? This next box says circle the sight word. Okay, the one that it wants you to circle is already circled for you. That is IS. What word is that? Awesome, it is IS. So you're gonna find all of the IS that's in this box and circle it. And the last box for this week, you're gonna write the word. You're going to use the box shapes to help you know if it's a tall letter, a letter that goes under the dotted line, or one that hangs down in the basement. That is a log. So you're going to write what you hear. Log. Log. Spell that word. All right. Day two. What sight word are we tracing here? B-U-T. But I want to go to the store, but I don't have any money. So you're going to B-U-T, you're going to write it twice. Okay. <clears throat> All right. This is coloring the pictures that begin with the blend. Okay. B-L. What does B-L say together? Bull. Bull. Okay. So we have a block, globe, ox, blender. Two of those start with bull. Block, globe, ox, blender. Circle the two that start with a bull. All right, this one, we're writing the vowel sound. That is a sun. So I want you to write the vowel that you hear. Write it on the line. Sun. All right, circle the sight word. Y-O-U is circled. What word is that? U. Very good. So you're going to pay attention because some of them are spelled incorrectly. You want to circle the word U that is spelled Y-O-U. There are three of them in addition to the one that's already circled. All right, the last box, that is a mop. So you're going to write what you hear, mop. Write them in the box. 
All right, day three, so this would be Wednesday, day three. What sight word are we tracing? Not, N-O-T, not. So trace that in your best handwriting. All right, color the pictures that begin with each blend. F-L, do you remember what F-L says? Full, full. We have floss, puzzle, triangle, flower. There's two of them that start with full. Floss, puzzle, triangle, flower. All right, this is a cat. So I want you to write the sound of the vowel that you hear in cat. Write it on the line. You're going to circle the sight word. The sight word that is circled is T-H-A-T. What is that? That. So you're going to circle. There's three more that that need circled in addition to this one. All right. And this is a picture of a corn cob. Cob. Write what you hear in the boxes. All right, now we're down to day four. Day four, we have this sight word, W-H-A-T, that you're going to trace. And that is what. So trace it in your best handwriting. And then this box, you're coloring the pictures that begin with the blend. There's two of them. G-L. Can you say that blend? Goal, goal. All right, we have gate, glasses, grape, gloves. Two of those have a goal at the beginning. Gate, glasses, grape, gloves. All right, this is a pot. Usually cook stew or soups or things like that in a pot. Write what vowel you hear in the middle of pot. All right. The sight word that is circled in this box is IT. What word is that? It. It. So you're going to find three more it and circle them. All right, and on this one, we're going to write the word of what the picture is. It is a fishing rod. Rod. Write what you hear using the shape boxes. Rod. And day five, what sight word are we tracing here? All. A-L-L -L is all, so you're going to trace that three times in your best handwriting. And in this one, you're coloring the two pictures that begin with the blend, S-L. What does S-L say? Slow, slow. We have a slide, astronaut, star, sled. Which two start with slow? Slide, astronaut, star, sled. Okay, we're going to write the vowel sound that you hear in the word net. Net. Write the vowel you hear. All right, circle the sight word, the sight word H-E. What is that? He, all right, he, there are three more sight word he in the box. Circle those. And the last picture, you're going to write the picture. It is a cot. It's a bed that you fold out and you sleep on. Cot, cot. Okay. All right. That's all for week one on the reading language arts. We're going to move on to the math sheet. 
All right, boys and girls, for the math sheet for April 13th to 17th, same thing, five-a-day math you're going to do from left to right. So day one would be from here to here. Day two, here to, across to here. Day three, across. Day four, you start at the left and go across. And day five, start at the left and go across. Each day has a quick check of addition. Remember, you can use your fingers, you can use drawings, you can just add up in your brain, put the big number and count up, whatever you need to do to get the addition problem. Okay? And remember, when you add a zero to any number, the answer is always that number. Okay? So you're going to write and tell me what the answer is to zero plus zero equals, you're gonna write your answer, one plus one equals, two plus one equals, one plus zero equals. Okay, the next box, there's a couple of clocks on this page. Remember, I know it's been a while since we've done clocks. The hour hand is the smaller, shorter hand. Okay, the smaller, shorter hand is the hour hand. The minute hand is the longer one. Okay, and we learned o'clock and half past or 30. Okay, the bigger hand is the minute hand. If it is pointing to the 12, it is what? O'clock. So you're going to write after the colon a zero, zero. And if it is half past or pointing to the six, you're going to write a what after the colon? The 30, because when you count, you go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay? Remember that as you're doing these. So you're going to write the time shown on the clock. You write the hour here and the minute here. Okay? And the minute's either going to be 0, 0 for o'clock or three zero for half past or 30, okay? So look at the clock and tell me what time it is. The next square, you've got, all you have to do is count and tell me how many. You're gonna count the smileys and you're gonna color in the six, the seven, or the eight. All right, the next box, we're filling in the missing number. Blank 2021. You're going to tell me what number comes before 20. And the last one for day one is we're using 10 frames. Remember, you can look at a 10 frame and know quicker how many you have. So you're going to count the black circles and tell me how many. All right, day two, quick check again. Zero plus four equals. 1 plus 3 equals, 1 plus 4 equals, and 0 plus 6 equals. Again, next block, how many using a 10 frame? Count the black circles and write how many. The next one is filling in the missing number, 6 blank 8. I want you to tell me what number comes after set six and before eight. And I almost told you the answer there. <laughs> All right, the next one, you're using the dice and you're adding them together. You can either just do five plus five equals and tell me, or you can count each dot all together and tell me. The last block for day two, you're t counting the pencils and you're telling me how many. If there are six, color in the six. If you're, there are eight, color in the eight. And if there are 10, color in the 10. Okay, for day three. Quick check again. Gotta practice those addition skills. <clears throat> Zero plus eight equals. 1 plus 5 equals, 1 plus 6 equals, and 0 plus 9 equals. The next square for day 3, you're going to count how many pair of sunglasses there are. If there are 3, color in this one. If there are 6, color in this one. And if there are 9, color in that one. 
And remember what I said about clocks. Again, you're going to write the time shown on the clock. You're going to put your hour here and your minute here. Your minute's either going to be 00 for o'clock or 30 for half past. <clears throat> okay? Next block, a 10 frame again. You're just going to tell me how many black circles there are and write it on the line. All right, and on this one, you're filling in the missing number. Blank, 17, 18. What number comes before 17? All right, day four, two plus zero equals, nine plus one equals, eight plus one equals, three plus zero equals. Next one, 10 frame again. You're just counting the, the black circles and telling me how many are filled in on the 10 frame. <clears throat> the next box, you're just counting the apples. Color in the three if it's three, four if it's four, and five if it's five. Next box, filling in the missing number, 18, 19 blank. What number comes after 19? All right. The last box, this one's something that we haven't done on this sheet yet, and you are completing an addition sentence. Blank plus blank equals 10. We know that it's 10 because the entire 10 frame is filled up. So you're going to count the black circles, and they go in the first box, plus the striped circles. And they go in the second box. So when you're done, you should have the black circles, plus the striped circles equals 10. All right, and now down to day five for your addition quick check. Four plus zero equals, seven plus one equals, six plus one equals, and five plus zero equals. All right, the next box, filling in the missing number, blank 11, 12. What number comes before 11? The middle, how many? How many black circles are in the 10 frame? Count them and tell me. Next box, another addition sentence, blank plus blank equals 10. You're going to take and count the black circles and put that here, plus the striped circles and put that here, and you have the black circles plus the striped circles equals 10. And we know that it's 10. Why? Because the whole 10 frame is filled in. And on the last one for the first week, you're counting the fish. Count the fish and color in the correct answer. If it's seven, color in that. If it's eight, color in that. And if it's nine, color in the nine. <clears throat> all right, awesome job, boys and girls. So that's all for the reading and the math. We're going to um, go ahead and finish up the first week with our science and social studies assignments and our art PE music and exploration. All right, first for the science and social studies, I just want you to each week as you complete the assignments, color in the box so that I know that you colored it. Um, you'll also turn in the scholastic work. So the first week, the first assignment for social studies is to be a good citizen. At home, help your family with a chore. What new chores can you learn? Good citizens are people who do good things to help a community run smoothly. And we have our home communities with our families where we work together to make things run smoothly. So think about some chores you can do. Make your bed, pick up your toys, vacuum, sweep, mop, help with the dishes, <clears throat> help with the trash. Just think of some chores you can do and help your family do those chores. Okay, pretty easy assignment for the first day. The next couple of days you're going to spend time, this will probably take you a couple of days, we're going to do the Scholastic Newsletter. Mo doesn't give up. We're going to read it together. You're going to, we're going to complete the back page. 
you there's a reading checkpoint worksheet that goes with it and a fill in the bubble like the little speech bubbles worksheet and I even gave you an art sheet where you can learn to draw a pigeon those are all fun activities for you to work on um, and then the last thing for the first week is to go on a nature walk outside you don't have to go to a park or to the the trail or even leave your yard you can just go outside and see what you can find in your yard write about all the things you see if you see any kinds of bugs or worms or plants or flowers or trees or how the weather is that would be a great thing to write about as you're going outside and just looking around and seeing what you can see all right so that's not too bad for the first week um let's see what we have for the art and the pe and the music and then we'll go back and we'll read the scholastic together and finish that all right, for the PE, the music, art, exploration, these are just some suggestions. Again, this page is optional. It's not mandatory, but these are some really great suggestions. And they're fun, and they're not meant to be stressful. If they're too stressful, don't worry about it. Don't do it. Uh, but some of them are fun, so it would be a fun activity to do with your family. Um, as you complete them, just color in the box so that I know. Um, one of the first activities you can do the first week this has to do with music write 15 words or say 15 words that describe music songs and sounds like things that miss han has been teaching you like loud and soft um things like that about certain songs you like and sounds just think about some different words you can say to describe music sounds and songs Try to come up with about 15 of those. And then ask your family, someone in your family, to think about five words themselves. And then compare them and see if you came up with some of the same words. Okay? Um, another option this week would be play a game of Simon Says. That'll get you physically active, up and moving. Um, somebody, You can take turns being the person that says Simon Says and the person that is doing the activities. <clears throat> Another one, run laps around your house or in your backyard. Just run, play tag, um, race, just run laps. Get See how fast you can go. Just get out there and get to running, okay? Another one for the first graders. Some of you guys know how to do this and some don't. A good thing to be doing right now is practice tying your shoes. Um, when we come back, hopefully I'll get to see you again. Uh, but we're almost second graders, so we want to be able to tie our shoes. So work on tying your shoes. And another activity you could do this week is have a sheet of paper and ask a family member to just draw a random line. It can be a curved line. It can be a letter of the alphabet. It can be a jagged line, a straight line. Just have them draw simply a letter or a line of some sort on a sheet of paper. And that's it. And then you take that picture of whatever that line is and you draw something from it. Be creative. This is for art. You can be creative and actually create a whole picture from just a single line. So think about what you can create and draw a picture using that line that your family member drew for you. Okay. Awesome. We're going to go and we're going to finish up our scholastic for this for this week and do those activities, watch the videos, read the story, and you guys will be done for week 1. All right, our scholastic for week 1 is Mo doesn't give up. Okay? Mo Willems is an author and an illustrator. He has made more than 60 books. How does he do it? So as we read the Scholastic, we're going to think about work habits that Mo has that we can have too. It's really good for us to have really good work habits, to try hard when we make a mistake, to just try, try again, never give up. So he has some of those um, work habits, and we're going to read about them. But first, I want to introduce you to him. Um, you may recognize some of these characters and you may have read some of his books. So we're going to watch a video that introduces us to Mo. Meet Mo Willems. 
Hello, my name is Mo Willems, and I make books. That means I write them, I draw them, I think about them, and hopefully you'll read them. I've been really lucky in my career. I get to do all kinds of interesting things. I've made animated films, I've written for television, I've written plays, I've had exhibits. But the thing that I love the most are books. And this is why I love books, because everything in a picture book is unique. Every picture book creator has their own style. They've got their own thing to say, their own way of saying it. Hey Mo, how do you get ideas? So I'm always thinking of ideas, and often they come when I don't expect them. I'm walking the dog, or I'm having a conversation or something, and suddenly this tiny seed speaks out and says, hey, maybe there's something here. So I go, and I try and remember that seed, and I go to my notebook, and I put it in my notebook, and I play with it, and I sort of turn it around and stretch it, and take that idea, that little seed, and put it into different positions. And over the years, I have got tons of notebooks of ideas that I can then come back to and see if maybe one seed and another seed, if I put them together, I can make something new or something special. How do the words in your books show what characters are feeling? When I make a book, I see the words as a type of illustration. So when a character is really excited, really angry, I make sure that the words are really big. Or maybe I change their color or I change their direction. And if a character is really sad or they're whispering, I make those letters really, really small. Because what I am is I am a director. And you are my performer. I am trying to direct you to read the stories in the way that I intended. And so if I slant all the letters, make them italic, then you'll read them differently. If I make them super bold, you'll read them heavier. All those different things are techniques that I use so that I can manipulate you into doing what I want. Do you ever make mistakes? Do I ever make mistakes? I, yeah, absolutely. I make mistakes all the time. A matter of fact, part of my job is to make mistakes. So that every now and then, one of those mistakes has a germ of something I wouldn't have thought of, and it becomes something great. Making mistakes is the most important of the process. Do you make your books all by yourself? When you are an author illustrator, when you are writing and drawing something, it is, in a sense, yours. You've created it. But there's always somebody helping you. There's my kid. There's my wife. There's my editor. There's my agent. There are my friends who are also writers. Sometimes we share each other's work and we give each other advice. So even if it just has my name on the cover, that doesn't mean that I'm the only person who was involved with that story. How long does it take you to make a book? So whatever book I'm working on right now, the ideas that I'm having, that I'm sharing with my editor, the sketches that I'm making, if you're in second grade right now, the soonest that that book would be finished, you would be in fourth grade. It takes a long time. It takes a lot of writing. It takes a lot of drawing. So the process takes years. Finishing a book is fun. It's cool. But it takes a while before the book is made because it has to go to the printer and there's technical stuff that has to happen. And then finally one day you get a box in the mail and there's the final book and it's in your hands and man, that feels really cool. But I tell you, for me, what feels the coolest is if I walk into a bookshop or I walk into a library or I'm just somewhere on the street and there's a real life kid reading one of my books and laughing, that is amazing. That is the best experience that I have ever had in my professional life. Hey Mo, can kids be writers too? Here's the thing. If you like to write, and you like to draw, and you like to make stories, you are a writer. You are an illustrator right now. That means that you have something to say. You have something to share. There's an audience out there that wants to hear what is uniquely you what matters to you. And this is the time, while everybody else is you know, running around or recess or playing video games or doing whatever, for you to be able to sit down and discover how to communicate your you 
to the world outside. So I'm going to speak just to you right now. That illustrator, that cartoonist who's sitting there watching this with all the other classmates or at home or whatever you're doing, take your time. The days you don't feel like drawing, draw those days anyway, because there's something special in you that's going to come out of your pen or out of your pencil, and it's going to change the world. That was such an interesting video. All right, we're going to read this together, and it is called Good Work Mo. How does Mo make a book? He has great work habits, and some of you guys may recognize these characters here. Pigeon, and then um, the pig and the elephant. So it's really exciting. All right, so we're going to read four points that he gives us of what he does, good work habits, to help him write a book. Number one, Mo takes his time. Mo made up the characters Elephant and Piggy. How many of you have read the book that, in, that has Elephant and Piggy in it? It took him a long time. He wanted two animals that were just right together. He drew a lot of pictures. He wrote down a lot of ideas. He did not rush. He took his time. And finally, he had it. Elephant and Piggy were the perfect pair. Number two, Mo knows mistakes are okay. He talked about that in the video. It's okay to make mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. All right? Mo's books aren't perfect on the first try. He makes mistakes. That's okay. A pencil has an eraser for a reason, he says. You can erase a mistake and try again. Mo makes a lot of changes on each book. I make many drafts, he says. Here is a draft and the final page from his book, A Big Guy Took My Ball. And here's the draft. And we have done rough drafts and final drafts when we write in class. And I know you guys remember that because we would write and then we would look over it and make have someone help us make changes. We would fix our sentences and our spelling and then we would write it again and do our picture with our final draft. So here's his draft, his first sketch, and right down here's his final page. So it takes a lot of time to make a final draft. Number three, Mo doesn't give up. Mo wasn't always a famous author. His first book was Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. Mo sent it to book companies, but no one wanted it. He didn't give up. He thought his book was good, and finally, after two years, someone published it. So if he'd have given up, we'd have never had the book Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. But he kept, he never gave up, and he kept trying, and finally someone published it for us. So we can read it. Number four, Mo believes in himself. Mo thinks his stories are good. He thinks your stories are good too. And he says that the stories you write are just as important as the ones he writes. There's no difference between what a first grader is doing and what I am doing, he says. So he believes in himself. It's important for all of us to believe in ourselves. If we want to be a writer or an author or an athlete or a singer or a teacher, whatever we want to be, we have to believe in ourselves that we can do it. And Mo believes in himself and he believes in you. All right, we're going to actually watch a couple of videos that talk about his characters. Um, Elephant and Piggy and Pigeon. And it's going to talk about how he came up with them and how he created them. These are really exciting videos. And I love learning about how he came up with the characters. All about Elephant and Piggy with Mo Willems. Hi, my name is Mo Willems, and I make books. Elephant and Piggy are the first characters that I purposely designed to be in a series. I knew I was going to make more than one Elephant and Piggy book. 
And so that meant I had to cast my main characters, like you cast a TV show. Well, Elephant came first. I knew who Elephant was. I had been drawing Elephant Gerald for about a year. Every night when we have dinner, we draw on the dining room table on a piece of paper. And so this Elephant had come up. I kind of had a sense of its personality. But I knew that Elephant Gerald alone would not be worth reading, that it wouldn't be exciting. I knew that Elephant Gerald needed a partner. So I held open auditions. I had a giraffe. I had muskrats. I had all these different animals come in to see if they would make a good partner for Elephant Gerald. And man, it was hard. I spent a long time auditioning and I just couldn't find the right character. I think I ended up with like a muskrat with a helmet at one point, but they just, they didn't get along. They weren't best friends. And then one day, Piggy showed up, and I knew it immediately, and I cast Piggy. And then, then, only then did I start thinking about writing the stories that Elephant and Piggy would be in. Elephant and Piggy are best friends, and I could show anything in their life. I made 25 books. I could have showed anything. I could have showed them eating breakfast. I could have showed them going to the movies. But what I chose to do in every single book is to show these two best friends almost losing their friendship, miscommunicating, and suddenly realizing, oh, man, I goofed, and then finding a way to rebuild their friendship together. So they're not the best friends because they all love the same things. They're not the best friends because they do the same things. They're not the best friends because they're famous. They're the best friends. Because whenever their friendship is about to fall apart, they do their level best to find a way to build it back together. So my job for 25 books was to make life miserable for them, was to stick them in the worst possible situations so that they almost lost their friends. All About Pigeon with Mo Willems. Hi, my name is Mo Willems, and I make books. Sometimes I hear kids say to me, I want to be a writer. And my answer to that is, you are a writer already. If you're writing, you're a writer. What you're really saying is, I want to get published. A lot of people want to get published. It takes a long time. My first book, we spent five years showing Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus to publishers. And we showed it to every single editor in all the publishing houses. Every single one of them said the same thing. Well, that book is unusual. Until finally we found an editor who said the most magical thing possible. That book is unusual. And unusual to this editor was cool. It wasn't bad. And so this editor, she decided to publish the book. And now I get to make books. Sometimes the idea for a book is different than what you think the book is about. So I have this pigeon book called The Pigeon Has to Go to School. And when you first think about it, you think, oh, Mo just thought about pigeon and school and put them together. But really what I was thinking about is uncertainty. Everybody has a time in their life when they have to do something and they don't know how it's going to go. And there's no way to get out of it. So everybody freaks out a little bit. Ah, I have to do this thing. I don't want to do it. What's it going to be like? I've never experienced it. What if something goes wrong? This sort of being afraid of the unknown is universal. I have it all the time. So then I started to think, well, the pigeon is a lot like me. What would be the thing that the pigeon would be freaked out about? What would be the thing that the pigeon didn't understand yet and was trying to figure out? And then it became school. So the way to write a book is not to just take a character and a thing and mush them together. It's to think about what is interesting to you, what scares you, what makes you happy, what makes you jealous. What, what scares you is usually a good idea for a book. The pigeon is the only character that I created that I don't know where he came from. He just one day showed up in one of my notebooks. I took a month off and I got a little cabin and I was trying to create the greatest picture book ever. And I wrote every day and I wrote every night. And one day the pigeon popped into one of my notebooks and said, don't write about that. 
right about me. These ideas are terrible. And I, I didn't believe the pigeon. I mean, where does this little doodle think that he knows more than all these ideas that I've been working on? But eventually, I listened to the pigeon. I said, you know what? I'm going to put you in a tiny little story just to get rid of you. So I made a small sketchbook that I gave to clients and friends one year for Christmas. And everyone who read it said, that's a story. And so in the end, the pigeon won. The Pigeon is the star of the first book that I ever had published. And The Pigeon hates it when I make books that are not about him. So he sneaks into every one of my other books. A matter of fact, The Pigeon has snuck into animated TV series that I did before I was even published. He has been around for a long time trying to become a star. All right, back to the Scholastic Newsletter on the back. We're going to write the titles in order. We're going to look at the Mo Willems books below. We're going to write the titles in ABC order on the lines. They have did the first one for us. Okay, we've done ABC order in class a few times, but we haven't spent a lot of time on that, so I'm going to help you guys through that. Remember, in order to put things in ABC order, you look at the first letter of the first word, and you put them in order based on which letter comes first alphabetically. So we have elephants cannot dance. What letter does it start with? It starts with an E. So I am going to write an E here. Um, so I'm going to put an E so that we know there's an E. Okay. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus. What letter does it start with? D. Don't. So that's a D. I'm going to write these here to help you guys. All right. Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. Goldilocks. What does it start with? G. All right. Who is the mystery reader? Who. What does it start with? It starts with a W. And we have Nuffle Bunny. It sounds like an N, but what letter does it start with? A K, because sometimes a K and an N work together cool and it's a silent k and we have leonardo the terrible monster leonardo what does it start with an l all right so we have e d g w k l all right so the first one is done for us d so when we're singing the alphabet a b c d d comes first so i'm gonna put a one up here okay because that comes first a b c d all right e do we have an e yes we have an e so then e elephants cannot dance is going to go second i'm just going to write the letter all right so up here this one is number two all right a b c d e f do we have an f nope g do we have a g yes goldilocks that will be number three and we'll put the G down here, so I'm not going to write the whole thing. You can, or you can just label, number them up here. That's fine. All right. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, no H, I, no I, J, no J, K. Do we have a K? Yes, we have Nuffle Bunny. So K is number four. So this one's four, so I'm going to put a big four right there. Okay, okay. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Do we have an L? Yes, we have an L, Leonardo. So Leonardo will be number five. So that means what is number six? W, W comes at the end. So who is the mystery reader would be number six. So you guys can go ahead and write your um, story titles in. That's all I'm going to do for now. It's easier for me to not write with my laptop on here because my handwriting is not good. <laughs> uh, but you guys can either write them in, put the numbers up top up here, or you can write what letter comes first, and or you can write the full title. All right, let's do the worksheets that I sent with this one, and we will be done with week one. All right, on this speech bubble worksheet, um, 
it is just a way for you to think of something positive to say to elephant so or to the or to piggy so if the speech bubble is gray here or it's coming from the elephant's mouth elephant is saying it so in this one this speech bubble is coming from him so it's what he is saying that is a speech bubble it's what he's saying this pink one is pointing toward the piggy so that's what piggy is saying so on here we have the elephant speech speaking on three we have the piggy speaking and on four we have the elephant speaking so elephant and piggy have some challenges we're going to look at the pictures below and we're going to write what they could say to help each other so think about how you might help the elephant or piggy say feel better about what what's making them feel down think about if it were you and your friend from school all right so elephant says elephants cannot dance elephant thinks that elephants cannot dance what could piggy say so i just want you to think about there's no right or wrong but this is a nice way to get you thinking like an author and thinking like um the, this is kind of like a comic strip because with comics the characters speak in speech bubbles so elephants feeling how he's feeling sad so we want to cheer elephant up so I want you to think of what piggy can say to cheer elephant up so think of a sentence that piggy can say and write that in the speech bubble and remember sentences have what at the beginning uppercase what at the end period so make sure your sentences have an uppercase and a period and try your best on the spelling i'm not taking off for that i just want you to try your best so think of something piggy could say to elephant to cheer him up okay number two elephant saying something so right here piggy is playing an instrument mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Piggy wants to play the trumpet, but it doesn't sound right. What could Elephant say? All right, so he's not the greatest trumpet player, but we don't want to hurt his feelings. So what could Elephant say to Piggy? Think about that and use a proper sentence and be nice and kind. All right, number three. Oh gosh, elephant dropped his ice cream. What could Piggy say? So there's his ice cream cone. He's really sad. You can tell by his sad frown face and his looks like he's getting ready to cry. So think about what you could say if you were Piggy to make elephant feel better. Write a complete sentence. And number four, Piggy wants to play outside, but it's raining what could elephant say all right so he looks what he looks kind of mad right piggy's kind of mad he's like stomping his feet and he's gritting his teeth and he doesn't look happy so what if you were elephant what could you say to piggy to make piggy feel better to be kind to piggy all right so work on those like i said no right or wrong i'm not taking off for spelling try your best to make it a complete sentence i just want to see what you can come up with if you were elephant or piggy and you were trying to make your friend feel better all right we've got a couple more all right this one is the reading checkpoint for the scholastic for mo doesn't give up so we're going to use the scholastic news to answer the questions all right number one what is the article mostly about is it about how mo has good work habits is it about how elephant and piggy are friends or is it about how mo uses a computer all right and if you think about it it does talk about elephant and piggy but is that all it talks about no it also talks about pigeon and it taught the whole main section of the story was talking about how it gave us four tips on how to be a good worker to have good work habits right all right so if we think about that and it never really talked to us about how he uses a computer so using that information what do you think it is how he has good work habits how elephant and piggy are friends or how mo uses a computer 
What is it mostly about? All right, number two, what is one way Mo took his time to create his characters? All right, and if you remember, to create his characters when he took his time, if we look back at the article, let me pull it up, all right, in one, it says he takes his time. So we go back and read. Mo made up the characters Elephant and Piggy. It took him a long time. He wanted two animals that were just right together. Right here are some answers we can use. He drew a lot of pictures. That's one option. He wrote down a lot of ideas. That's another. He did not rush. That's another. So he takes his time because he drew lots of pictures. He wrote down a lot of ideas and he did not rush. Those are all good answers for that one. All right, number three, true or false? Mo never uses his eraser to fix mistakes. Is that true or false? What does he say erasers are for? For fixing mistakes. So do you think he uses an eraser? All right, so if he never uses an eraser, then the statement, would it be true or would it be false? Awesome. Pick your choice. And number four, this is fun for you. Mo has characters named Elephant and Piggy. Can you make up an animal character? Draw it here and write its name. So um, I want you to make up a character kind of like um, when we made up Dr. Seuss characters. I want you to come up with an animal character. I want you to draw it and then I want you to give him a name, your character's name. So draw what be creative. It doesn't have to be real. It can be a real animal or it can be make make believe. So I want you to draw a new animal character, make one up that you would write a story about, draw it and give it a name. All right? And there's one more worksheet that's optional. Uh, but I thought it would be fun to learn how to draw pigeon, the pigeon from his stories. And that's the last worksheet. Let me get that here for you. All right. So the last worksheet is draw the pigeon. And like I said, this one is not required, but I thought it would be fun and it, it would incorporate art into your work. And Miss Holly, I'm sure, would love to see these when you're finished with them. So if you do draw this, put your name on it and send me a picture turn it in or you can turn it in on paper and I'll make sure Mrs. Holly gets a picture of it and I'm sure she will be super excited to see your artwork. Um, don't forget to sign your name so everyone knows who made this awesome pigeon. So you want to write your name up here and it's teaching you how to draw it. It gives you basic steps and I think any of us, even Mrs. Nestor, could draw this pigeon. Um, and I may do that. I may draw a pigeon and add it and show you after I draw it. Um, so you're going to start with the letter O and then draw a smaller O. So you're going to draw a bigger O and a smaller O. I'm actually might try that right now so you guys can laugh at me because I know you love my drawings. All right, so I'm going to do a, remember I'm using a computer so it may not be the greatest O in the world. All right, it's kind of, eh, it's harder to use a computer. Number two, draw another circle in the eye and color it in. All right, so I'm going to try to color in an eye. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Um, to make the beak, draw a letter M on its side. So I'm going to draw a letter M, kind of. Not bad, not bad. Remember, I'm using a computer, um, a laptop. So... Ah, uh, who am I kidding? I'm not a good drawer. <laughs> you guys laugh at my artwork. Number three, draw two lines straight down for the neck. So I'm going to do straight down. It's a really long neck. Draw two lines across the neck for the collar. So let's put the collar on the pigeon. All right, Miss Nestor's not doing too bad, too bad. All right, number four, now draw the body. It's shaped like an ice cream cone that's fallen over. Huh? I don't really see an ice cream cone that's fallen over. All right, 
I'm just going to draw a straight line. And I'm going to, it's kind of like a half heart to me. That doesn't really look like an ice cream cone to me. But, all right, I'm going to draw the two legs coming down. And step five, draw two upside down letter V's for the feet. All right, so let's do, there's a V. It's kind of off-centered. And here's a V. And draw another V for the wing. And you're done. Mrs. Nestor just drew pigeon. So it was a really fun activity, and it took me like a couple of minutes. So I think you guys would... Um, really enjoy drawing pigeon. It's very simple and the instructions are very, very easy. So try your best. It's not for a grade, but it is fun. It's, uh, it's fun to challenge yourself. And Miss Nestor didn't do half bad and you know how I draw. Um, when you finish it, I would love for you to send it to me so I can send it to Miss Holly. I love you guys. That is all for week one. And I will be back with week two and week three. And hopefully by then you will be back in my classroom and I can see your beautiful faces. All right. Enjoy your time working at home with your families and hopefully soon I'll see you.